Hey everybody, this is Bradley Bush with another algebra video for you. Today we're talking about systems of linear equations in three variables. Specifically, we're going to talk about the no solution option because in systems of linear equations in three variables, you have three options, one solution, no solution, or infinite solutions. I have videos on the other two options, but today we're just focusing just on the no solution option. And this is our to-do list. Uh, we have a quick overview of systems of linear equations in general, how to solve them, what they look like, uh, the fact that they're in three space. You see the little 3D grid on the side right there on the right. And then the second thing, we'll go through a work example of a system that has no solution. So let's start with our review. The first thing we should probably talk about um, is what is a system of linear equations in three variables. That's a lot of math language and it kind of sounds complicated. But the good thing is it really isn't because the three variables part, that just means we have three variables in our equations. So we have equations in our systems and we have three variables in them. Usually they're x, y, and z. They can be anything though. The second thing we should talk about is that uh, these equations in our system are linear. That means they fit this form up top, x plus by plus cz equals d. The x, y, and the z are just variables, and they will not have powers on them bigger than 1. The one that you will see there, excuse me, the 1 will be implied, and it won't actually be there but you won't see a two, a three, or a one half, or anything else. So something else that we can look at as we're looking at this is kind of helpful for us is that these equations are just planes, meaning think a sheet of paper. So we'll have three systems, sorry, three equations in our system. That means we'll have three sheets of paper and these sheets of paper are infinite sheets of paper, meaning they go on and on in each direction of the edge of the sheet. So it's three big sheets of paper. And we're looking to see where those sheets touch. Um, system. What does a system mean? Well, a system just means we have more than one plane. And in our systems, we'll generally have three planes, so three sheets of paper. So really, it kind of sounds complicated, but it really isn't. It's not bad. We have three large sheets of paper in three-dimensional space, and we're just looking at them, trying to see where they touch. Here's an example system of three linear equations in three variables. So we have three variables, x, y, and z. And this specific system has one solution. So this touches in one spot. And that one spot that they all touch in three space is x equals negative 1, y equals 2, and z equals negative 2. So a solution to a system would be any ordered triplet, any x, y, z, any point in three space that touched all three planes at once. Here are your three possible options. And again, we are going to discuss the no solution category today. But we have three possible options. You have one point, meaning your system, or your three big sheets of paper could touch at only one specific point, just like you see here in these two pictures. You could have no solution as you see in these top two pictures, the sheets either don't ever touch like you see at the top. Those are all parallel, parallel, not touching. Or the second picture here, two of them touch, but not all three. And the same thing goes for the third picture. Looks kind of like a turned capital letter A. Uh, and you have two of them touching at certain points. Like here you have two points two touching, here you have two touching, and here you have the two touching, but not all three of them. And the last option would be an infinite number of solutions. I mean, they touch at an infinite number of points. 
you can see here that all of these points up along this curve, up along this line, all of those are points and uh, that are touching all three of the planes. So they're an infinite number of solutions. So one solution, no solutions, or infinite solutions. It might be nice to know which option you have in the system you're looking at, option one, two, or three. So how do you know? Well, you just start solving the system. Once you start solving the system, if you get an answer in X, Y, Z, then you know you're in option one and you have only one answer. Otherwise, as you're going along, all of the variables will drop out. They'll just disappear and you're left with numbers and equal signs. So if your numbers and equal signs make a true mathematical statement like 0 equals 0 or 2 equals 2, then you know you're in option 3 and you have infinite solutions. If the numbers left make a false statement like 0 equals 2, which is not true mathematically, then you know you're in option 2, which is no solution. So we'll be looking for that option uh, scenario to play out in our example. How do you solve these systems? How do you solve a system of linear equations and three variables? Well, it's a lot like solving a system of linear equations and two variables, except there's one additional step. So we have three equations. We take two of them and we use the addition or substitution method and we eliminate one of the variables. Once we do that, we'll have a new equation and we'll set that aside. We go back to our set of three equations and we pick two different equations and eliminate this, the same variable we eliminated the first time. That'll give us a second new equation that we put aside. Now we have those two new equations, two new equations right here in yellow. Once we have those two new equations that are only have two variables, then we are back to the two equations, two variable scenario. And we use the addition or subtraction method to solve for those two variables. Once we have those two variables, we back substitute, meaning we put those back into one of the original three and solve for the third and final variable. So it sounds a little complicated, but it really isn't. Let's try a system here that has no solution. So we'll be looking sometime for the variables to drop out. So if we look at this system, I would probably say, well, let's get rid of the Z's because you know, you notice here, if you took two and multiplied it by equation two, then you could add the two and the two Z and the negative two Z would drop out. So let's, let's try that. Let's actually add equation one that should be circled so should this be circled because my equ my equation indicators i mean my my equation labels are circled numbers and so i need to keep that consistent so let's use equation one plus two times equation two and then add them together and uh, we'll see what we get. So equation one is x minus three y plus two z equals negative seven. This is equation one, so we'll put the one there with the circle. Now we need to do two times equation number two. So two times four x gives us eight x. 2 times y gives us positive 2y. 2 times negative z is negative 2z. 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. And this is equation, we'll call it 2.1 because it's not equation 2. We changed it a little bit. So it's kind of like an upgrade. So when we add these two together, these two equations, 1 and 2.1, we get 9x and negative y, zero for the z's, which is what we want, right? And negative 17. So we have a new equation here. 
9x minus y is negative 17. We're going to call that equation equation number 4. So now we go back to our original set of three equations and we choose two different equations to eliminate that same variable, the z. So if we use equation 3 and we add 3 times equation 2, I think that'll do it. So let's do that. So equation 3 is 6x. minus 5y plus 3z equals 1. That is equation number 3. So we'll identify it. Equation, now we have two or 3 times equation 2. So 3 times 4 is 12x. 3 times y is positive 3y. 3 times negative z is negative 3z. 3 times negative 5 is negative 15. And this is going to be 2.2 because it's not equation 2 or 2.1. It's our latest, latest and greatest. Now we add these two equations, 3 and 2.2, and we get 18, 18x and a negative 2y, 0 for the z, and negative 14. So this gives us a new equation. 18x minus 2y equals negative 14. We're going to call this new equation equation number 5. So now we have two new equations. We have equation 4 and we have new equ equation 5. Those both have just two variables, so now we're back into the two equation, two variable land. And we use addition or subtraction to solve for x and y. Once we get that, we'll come back up to the original three, choose one of them, and plug in our x and y and solve for z. And we'll be done. If we get that far. So let's see. Now, let's use 4 and 5 and solve for x and y. So I have equation 4. I have equation 5, and if we take equation 5 and we multiply equation 4 by 2, negative 2, then we will get rid of the y's right here. So let's do that. So if we have equation 5, which is 18x minus 2y equals negative 14. That's equation 5. Now we need 2 times equation 4. 2 times 9 is 18. Sorry, negative 2 times equation 4. Negative 18. x, negative 2 times negative y gives us positive 2y. And negative 2 times negative 17 gives us positive 34. When we add these two here, we get a 0 and a 0. We have an equals, and we get 20. Well, does 0 equal 20? It does not. It does not equal 20. So that's a false mathematical statement. Notice all of our variables dropped out right here in this step that's highlighted now in blue. All the variables dropped out and we had numbers. We had 0 plus 0, which gave us 0, so we ended up having 0 equals 20. That 0 there isn't a super great 0, so let me rewrite it. So 0 equals 20. That's the false statement mathematically. So we know that we are in the no solution category. That's it. It's as simple as that. If you guys have questions, let me know. Thanks for watching.